Um, when somebody says that like they were biologically a male but they changed to a female, uh, sh like how should we go about like do we accept them? Do we like how do we go about that being Christians? There's some giggles. It's a hard question to ask because honestly, this type of question never would have been on anybody's radar when I was in high school when I graduated in 2015, but now it's so normal. 20% of our generation self-identifies as LGBTQ+. 20%. That's one in five. So if you count the people sitting around you, one in five, chances are in our generation, are dealing with questions like this every single day. There is a way to show love to someone and to love someone without endorsing their lifestyle or how they are choosing to live their life. And as Christians, we are called to love everyone, including loving our enemies. But loving people starts with telling them the truth and not giving in to the lies of society. It's an incredibly difficult journey to walk right now with our generation that I think we're still trying to figure out. Uh, but ultimately, it's not supposed to be easy. And I don't know how much of an experience you guys have had rubbing up with Christian values in a society that's rejecting everything we believe in from a Christian values perspective. But the gospel does not say that you are going to be beloved or that you're going to have a million friends or five million followers on TikTok or have every job opportunity available to you or even that it's always going to feel good to be a Christian. In fact, the gospel repeatedly says over and over and over again that if you dare to tell truth to a world that's rejecting the very concept of truth, and we believe as Christians, truth has a name, right? And that name is Jesus Christ. You will be hated. Hated. You'll be persecuted. Your safety might be threatened. I experienced that on college campuses all the time. You probably saw the story of a young woman named Riley who was punched and repeatedly assaulted this week at San Francisco State University at one of our events, you might lose your job. You might have friends or family members choose not to have a relationship with you anymore. You'll probably get an F in a college class at one point or another if you say that God is the creator of the universe. That's the world that we live in today. And I don't say that to scare you or freak you out or make you feel like you have to be submissive to the demands of cancel culture and the world and the woke group of people that's trying to cancel out everything that we believe in as Christians. I say that to empower you because instead of seeking the approval of the world, which is an incredibly temporary finite amount of time, we have the luxury of knowing this world is not our home. The next world is. Life goes extremely fast and the demands of culture change every five minutes. But the demands of God and what we believe in and truth and sharing that truth with the world never changes. And I say that to empower you, to encourage you, to know that no matter what the world throws at you, take it as a sign that you're going in the right direction because if this world loved you, you probably aren't walking in truth.